Hey everybody, Linda A.K. The Gamer Girl here, and today we are going to update you all. I decided I'm going to do it monthly instead of all at the end of the year. So the very first game that I beat for the year was Saints Row the Third. I wanted to play through Saints Row again. And the games that I had decided were Saints Row 1, then Saints Row 3. Now, it didn't take me a day to beat this. I started it actually over the holiday weekend, and then I completed it actually on the first, the, the new year. So it was a fun game. Uh, I've always loved this. This has been my number one for Saints Row games. This one, then the first, and then it goes the fourth, then the second, and then Get Out of Hell. So. Definitely try it out if you never, it's an open world game, it's just like GTA, but it's got a lot more slapstick humor. The second game that I beat was Tales of Iron on the Switch. Oddbug did a really good job. It's a game about a little mouse who witnesses the frogs come in and invade his little kingdom and kills the king and steals all the people, even including his brother and they're captive and you have to go find them. So it's got a little RPG element to it. Um, it really is just going investigating. And I will say a lot of developers need to take note from Oddbug. If you're gonna make me do side missions that are tedious and pointless, give me something that's an objective to it. I don't mind having to build up my you know levels, get more gear, stuff like that. If there actually is a reason and end goal I liked that there was always, you felt like an urgency, like, oh, I need to f help this person fix this thing, go over here, do this. And then there was a lot of like fighting and stuff like that. A lot of the characters had little colors pop up on their head and whatever the color was, you had to go in and do whatever that was. So say you had the color red, you had to do a dodge, then yellow was parry, so you had to go in and just time it perfectly or you would get basically your ass handed to you be like damn i fell on the ground oh well but yeah definitely for sure try this game it's i don't know if it's uh cheap right now but it was even if it's still the full price of whatever they're asking for definitely pick this up the third game on the list was bullet witch i had this in my backlog for a long long time and i finally just decided you know what pick it up, let's play it, let's go for it. And I kid you not when I say that I had a blast with this. I enjoyed it from beginning to end. It's kind of like um, a lot of games where you kind of like Lollipop Chainsaw or um, Bayonetta where you literally just have a horde of people that are running at you. And when you're playing, you just have to, you have a machine gun, um, like, uh, it's kind of like, a, it looks like it's supposed to be a broomstick, but it's a machine gun shaped like a broomstick, which is hilarious to me that it's, she's a witch. Yeah, I get the pun. <laughs> so the developers did a good job on that one. But I will say I did not like some of the AI in the background. It's supposed to be, you see people getting hurt, killed. Literally the AI people that are like uh, from the town running, they just run into the wall. They don't do anything. And then the creatures that are attacking, they're pretending to attack them. Like one time I literally just stood there and watched a horde of like, I don't know, they're, I think they're zombie creatures attack and just annoy the hell out of me. Cause I'm like, literally like there was no urgency on that part because you knew that the, the people were okay because as they're running around, they're just running back and forth. And then the, the creatures are pretending to shoot at them and they don't get hit. You don't see them die. You don't see them have anything happen. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, okay, there's a person running around. No, no big deal. Get over it. Like, that's it. That's the only thing I had to gripe about. Other than that, great, great monsters. The end battle was amazing. I enjoyed it. I felt actually scared. Like, I was like, oh, I'm confined to a little area. He's big. He's going to attack me. I hope I don't get squished. But yeah, great game. Definitely try it out. The next game was Wet. Literally, it's a Quentin Tarantino film shoved into a game. You play chapters and you have to not just walk through a scene, you have to do it in an epic style. You have to do twists, turns, flips. 
you don't flip or you don't flick around or slide or do anything epic, you won't get points. You're starting over from scratch, from ground zero. You have to start over the mission. And it, it takes a little bit of time to get used to because I'm used to just getting a bunch of bullet sponges and having to just run through and, and go, no. I actually have to kick them, punch them, run around, spin, flick, slide, kill, 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 kill. Like, I enjoyed it. I really did. I, I love Quentin Tarantino films. I loved watching, you know, anything to do with Grindhouse. I had both the DVDs and I, I watched them all the time. So this was a nice little balance of like, you get a shooter, you get a movie. The only thing I didn't like about this game was the time trials and going back in time, it'll say like three months prior and you have to do these little tedious time trials. It cut through the action. I didn't like them. They were a waste of my time. You literally didn't earn anything. You didn't get anything. You just, you run around. You, you're supposed to learn something. It's like a tutorial but I don't need a tutorial. You should have given me a tutorial in the beginning. I would have knocked that out, moved on. I don't like tutorials. I don't like them in the middle. They were not worth my time and they did not help me at all. I didn't learn anything from them. I just learned by trial and error. So don't worry about the time trials. They're not worth anything. They're not gonna give you any new guns. They're not gonna give you anything. So that's the only thing I didn't like about the game. After what I played Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate. I like this game. It was fun. I enjoyed it. I had a blast. Uh, the story was really good. The only thing that really irritated me was they teased you about the tournament the whole time and then you fought like two fights out of the tournament and I was like, oh man, come on. I really wanted the tournament that actually kind of like Mortal Kombat where you saw every single fight and you saw who got to what and then it was just like they just jumped you to like the very end and you're like, oh, come on. But I really enjoyed this. It's a good fighter. I've loved Dead or Alive from the beginning and yeah, I had to return my copy originally from back in the day because of the animations in some areas, but definitely try it out if you haven't played this. This is a good fighter. Now the only sad disappointing game that really irritated me was Clive Barker's Jericho. This game irritated me from beginning to end. I streamed a little bit of this game in the beginning and I will say that this took me a couple months to beat because of my team AI. The AI is stupid as hell. Damn, I hated this AI. The, literally, this AI, you have team members who are tanks. They're supposed to be tanks, they're supposed to be in the front, they're supposed to shield and block and do everything that you're supposed to do. They didn't do that. The tank characters would stay in the back, the healers would be in the front getting killed. Then I had no healers, so then I had to just deal with everything and try to heal myself. And that was what irritated me. The healer would die instantly, causing an unnecessary challenge. I don't need an unnecessary challenge. I have a bunch of bullet sponges right in front of me who are taking my team out. I don't need the healer to be in the front lines doing stupid crap. I was fine with the healer just being in the middle, waiting for somebody to get healed, go heal, come back. That's what the, the main job of that person's supposed to do. The story is great. I love the story, but it's just, I was so frustrated to get to every single part that I just, I was like hating and regretting every part of the, like, I love the cutscenes. I loved, you know, the story of you had to, you were a team who goes in to investigate what is going on with the spiritual, like, you're, you're basically the FBI, but for the spirit world. And you're trying to find out what's going on in this like area. And your team is called Jericho. I don't know why they put Clive Barker's name on this. It, it was a disaster from beginning to end, so I feel bad for Clive Barker. I The only reason why I'm keeping this game is because of Clive Barker. Otherwise, I would have sold this and got rid of this. I would have been done from beginning to end. I would have been done as soon as I could. But yeah, I really would have liked this game if they had fixed the AI. I don't know why the developer did this, but another thing that really pissed me off is there's cheats in the game. But you had to call a phone number that's no longer available and the cheats are only available for a specific system. So you gave me cheats, but I can't use them. And I know it was a money-making thing because they probably made the game hard on purpose. So you had to call and get cheats of unlimited ammo and different things like that. It would have made the game so much easier. But now that the game is, is done and you can't get the cheats, you made an impossible game. The developer, Codemasters, Screw you.
The next game that I beat was Mario Kart Deluxe. This was a nice refresh to get away from Clive Barker. I had been playing this over the year. I would play a few races, beat them, move on, go play another game. So it was like jumping from this game to other games back and forth. And it was a nice balance. Uh, the reason why I finished it was because I hadn't practiced in a long time and I was gonna play a, you know, a stream with Retro Mikey and a couple other people. And I was like, oh, I'm really rusty. I need to get back in this and start playing again. So I got through, finished the grace and I got Gold Mario. I didn't realize that you actually got something other than just, you know, some carts. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot you get Gold Mario. So it's really nice to get Gold Mario. I like him. He's cool. He's shiny. <laughs> so yeah, definitely if you can play, you know, finish the races. They're actually worth it. You get something nice out of it. So after Mario Kart, I got Xbox Game Pass, and the very first game that I remembered because I had this card with me was to play Battletoads. I got this card to remind myself to get Battletoads, and I'm glad I kept this card because it's a great game. It has the same elements of the original Battletoads. You still have the kart level, and you still have the levels with, you know, beat-em-ups and different things like that. The one fun thing that surprised me was it did the platforming part as a different creature other than a toad. So it was really cool to see, I liked that part. And I loved the humor. The cast did a great job. They had fun times with, I believe, referencing old stuff from back in the day. And you're just the toads and you're trying to get back into your limelight, glory, whatever you're trying to do. So this game was fun. I'm so glad I finally got to play it. And yeah, if you haven't played this and you have Xbox Game Pass, definitely download it and play it for sure. So the next game that I beat was Aliens Armageddon. I was at an arcade that I had showed a video of and I had some credits I had to burn and I looked at the round at all the arcades and I was like, hmm, well, there's not really anything I want to play. And then I looked and I found Aliens Armageddon and I was like, oh, I like Aliens. Uh, let me just pop all the credits in and play it. And actually, it's a really short game. Um, it's about 45 minutes long, like normal. It's just a, supposed to be a quarter sponge, but actually I beat it with very few credits. I had a good chunk of credits left and I was like, okay, so I did a good job. So it's basically uh, the end of the world, the aliens are attacking, same thing as always, and they're at Earth. So you have to get the people from point A to point B, which is a rocket to get out and, and live. And the main objective is to escort them through and so you escort them through and it's like a rail shooter you literally on your own rails and you have just different points to go to i will say the monsters that they added were really fun i did like them there's like snake snake creatures i've never seen before that are a big behemoth of a thing and they made me like stand back and go whoa so it's fun um i will say i did like that they added to where it doesn't just like give you the progress if you mess up, you have to go back and restart. So I only had to restart twice, and that was once in the middle, and then once at the almost to the very end where you have to like help them get to the rocket and have the rocket send off. And that one, the, that part was actually really hard. So that was the only second time that I had to keep going and restart from that. But definitely worth a try if you have it in your arcade. Pick it up, grab the gun, play it. And the gun has actually got some weight to it. And there's an option where you can, instead of having to like point down, you could just like, there's a little clicking, um, like it's like click the, to like add a fake clip to the gun. And I like that. You could just like hit the clip and then it would just like, oh, reload, reload. So it was really nice. I like that little addition to the gun that they added. And the last game for the month was Last Stop. Last Stop was also on Xbox Game Pass. I streamed this from beginning to end and it was a fun game. It's narrative. It's basically a butterfly effect. You choose what happens. It's got not much very like, there's only a couple times where you feel like you really need to like focus on something. Other than that, you just choose the options. Um, I guess there's a good ending and a bad ending, but really it's not very much different. There's two different ways each character can have an ending and then that changes how everything stops, but I liked it. It's basically your three characters. Um, the first one is kind of like a Freaky Friday situation where you switch bodies with somebody. 
The second one is you're having marital problems and job problems and you have to figure out what's going on with that. And the third one is she is stuck finding out that there's a guy who's creepy and you don't know what's going on, but he's meeting women, taking them home, but not returning them to their house. So you have to find out kind of like a murder mystery. And I like it. It's a really cool, I'm not going to spoil the twist ending, but it's very fun. I recommend it to anybody who's never played it before. Try it before it leaves Xbox Game Pass because I don't, Feel like I would have bought the game if I didn't have it on there because it's a game like eh you're gonna you're gonna play it once and then once you find out the story you're not gonna want to play it again so it's kind of like a one and done deal so I'm glad I was able to rent it and definitely rent it try it out see if you like it and if you do pick it up I mean it's probably cheap right now and there you have it there is all the games that I beat for January 10 total so far I'm not doing any challenges. I am not, you know, attached to any single group. There's like seven groups right now that are doing challenges to at least get to like 50 games. I've seen most of them are like 50 something around there. And the rest of them are just like keeping track on Twitter as normal. And it's pretty cool. I like it. Um, the reason why I did this video was because I realized that December slash January was difficult for me to remember what happened the previous past year. Most of the games that I would play, I really had a hard time remembering. So the review would be, eh. and then the reviews for, you know, November and uh, like December were great. Like I would be like talking a lot about them. So I felt like they deserve their own months. So here's January and I'll pick it up after and keep going every month. So you'll get an update up until end of December and then what I'll do is I'll just uh, start again fresh brand new so let me know um, have you started keeping track after I started doing it or anybody else you saw doing it and if you are are you attached to any of the groups and how what's your number if you are because I know there's like 50 52 uh, saw a couple others that were doing like 65 which is a stretch for some but if you're on the track like me, you're probably going to hit that number within like six months. If you keep hitting 10 a, a month, you probably could get 100 in no time. So thank you for watching. If you're new, hit the sub button. And damn, I'm on a good start, right? <laughs> so I'll catch you next time. And bye, everybody. Linda the Gamer Girl. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Girl. She's here, she's playing games.